from Mercedes to uh, AMG V8 engine right now. I'm a, I'm a fan of those cars, and they have a new a new V8 where they're kind of taking the idea of the V8 and reversed it completely so that on the outside of the V are the intakes, and in the center of the V are the is the exhaust. So they're able to put the turbos right in the so, center. It's got big exhaust pipe coming off the top. Yeah, it looks like a diesel when you see it. But the idea was hot inside, so when when I'm designing an amplifier, and I designed for the Rockford, one of our rules was we couldn't let the amplifier get over about 175 degrees on the outside because people can touch it, and burn themselves, can melt the carpet, whatever. And that's kind of unfortunate because these, these parts can handle up to 250, 275 degrees. So there's a lot of headroom that you can't get to. So our idea is hot inside. And we can let this get well over 200 degrees inside here. There's nothing for the customer to touch. I can get rid of a lot of heat, and that way you can, I can get a 302 just down to the size of the CD case. Right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony Demore. I'm from Demore Engineering. Um, I love car audio. I love all audio. Uh, I have a uh, background in electrical engineering. Worked for some major audio companies for uh, 10 or 15, I guess about 15 years now. Maybe 20 actually, I don't know. We're getting old. And we're here to show off our new product. This is uh, a full range class AB hi-fi amplifier that's been shrunk down to the size of about a CD case using some innovative technology that we came out with. And uh, we're here to show them. We have, uh, can, you, can you tell me a little bit about what, what I'm seeing here? Most people don't get to see an amplifier as exposed sure. in such a way. Yeah, so these are this is the front end of the amplifier or the input section. Signal comes in here, goes through the input section, gets uh, has gain and balance, unbalance switch. There's a clipping LED here. The signal goes through to this, on my amplifiers anyways, goes to this, and this is an amplifier in itself. This is a fully class A amplifier, about a one watt amplifier. Each channel has one. And after- What are these caps doing? They're just filtering the signal, filtering out things you don't want, and keeping everything that you do want. And- the cooling system going off? Yep. After the signal leaves the class AB amps, it goes, or the class A amplifiers, it goes to the class AB current stage, and that's where it does the heavy lifting. All these devices do the heavy lifting here, they get hot. So, in order to deal with the heat, we came up with a solution like this heat sink with a whole bunch of fins, a lot of surface area, and these awesome ceramic isolators, fan bolts directly there. Cool air comes in, gets all the heat, and then shoves it out underneath the circuit board and eventually out of the amplifier along here. Beautiful thing. So we're able to get 300 watt amp this small. So this is a, a two channel amplifier with 300 watts total power. So it does 150 times two. This here is basically two of those on the same chassis to give us a, what we call the 604. So it's 150 times four for a total power of 600. And this can be bridged and this can be bridged to give you 300 times two. So these are two of the models. There's also uh, it's about six other models in the lineup. We're going to launch four of them, uh, hoping to ship those by November, and uh, four other models after that. So some bigger monoblocks and a five channel and an eight channel. What is this big bad boy doing? This big bad boy here is our, our kind of our statement piece. Well, it is our statement piece. It was actually built off of a home amp that I built myself just for fun. We hooked it up in a car one day and said, wow, this is amazing. If we could have a car amp that did this, that'd be killer. So we took the home amp and changed the power supply out to a, a car supply, basically, and, and there it is. So it's our statement piece. It's uh, Class A. It uh, does about 100 watts times four in full Class A mode, and then sliding into Class AB where it does about 500 times four. So it's a big, powerful amplifier, super heavy. It's almost... Uh, it's almost 30 pounds. And it's just a beast. Can you explain class A, class A, B, and the importance behind this? Sure, yeah. So uh, a class A amplifier, a push-pull class A amplifier, I'm trying to find a prop here. When the speaker moves out, it's because it's getting a positive voltage and then it gets a negative voltage when it pulls back. So you have kind of two things tugging, tugging at the same thing and they never let go of it. So this is the negative 
and this is the positive, and they, this is a speaker in the middle, and they push and pull it back and forth like this, like a push-pull Class A. But the important part is, none of, neither one lets go. In a Class AB, when it goes this way, it does this, and then this. And the moment that they're both held together is the Class A moment, which only lasts for a little bit of movement, and then it goes into Class B. That's why it's called Class A, B, because it's A and then B. A, B. So, uh, What's the purpose for A versus A, B? In A, they're both, they're, you're doing twice as much work, really, because they don't, you don't need both to do this, but it sounds better because I have control over this the whole time, and there's no handoff where a little bit of distortion can happen every time that handoff happens. So that's the idea of, uh, yeah, of the Class A, yeah. Is there a Class C? Uh, I believe there is a Class C, but it's not used in audio. What about Class D? Yes, there is a Class D. Now, Class D is a, it's a completely different concept entirely. So instead of, uh, if we look at that example that I gave, but let's say it's two water valves, and I turn this one on and the speaker moves this way, and then I turn this one, the speaker moves that way, a Class A or AB is doing this, it's moving the speaker back and forth smoothly. A class D is like switches. There's no variableness. They're just on, off, on, off. And, and if, it's like a light dimmer. If you wanted your light to be dim, you would just flip it on and off really fast, but you would leave it off longer than it's on. And if you want it to get brighter, you'd leave it on longer than it's off, but the whole time it's switching on and off. So zeros? Yeah, basically on and off. So uh, if you look at the, the sine wave of a class D, so a yeah, it looks like this because it's just a lot of uh, on and offs going on. Can you imagine in the future that class D will get smooth enough for the technology get to a point where it's imperceptible? It's, it's going to be hard to realize, I think, because to, the, to get it smoother, you have to switch it faster. And the faster and faster you go, the more energy you lose just in doing the switching. So eventually, you're almost as inefficient as a Class AB once you get there, right? So it's like, you can take a picture of the Mona Lisa with a high-res camera, but it's still not the Mona Lisa. Yeah, it might look like, maybe you got a billion megapixels, you know, like, yeah, it's really, really good, but but it's never gonna be the, the original one. What else we got here? So we've got our, uh, our line of hand tools. This is actually how the company started with this piece here. This is called the distortion detector or the DD1. This is used for setting an amplifier's gains and, and finding your head unit's maximum clean output, signal processors, all that stuff, setting up the entire gain overlap of a system. So let's put these probes here on the output of your amplifier. You turn this on, put a signal in here, and start turning up the head unit and It'll show you when it detects a signal, when it distorts. You'll know where your maximum head unit number is, and then you can, uh, and then you can adjust the gain of the amplifier up till you hit it again, and then ah. you, you know that you're you're set up right. Yep. And we've got a. That's all this does. This is for setting gains. Uh, the DD1 Plus is just an upgraded version of this. It handles more power. It gives you uh, really fine control of the game, tells you right on the screen how many decibels of overlap you've dialed in. Uh, this is a CC1, this is a crossover calibrator. So this is for amplifiers that have built-in crossovers where the knob says 40 on one side and 400 on the other and you have no idea what's in the middle. You wanna set your crossover at 80 hertz. You play, a, you play a special calibrated track that comes with this and then you just adjust your knob up or down until it turns, you know, blue and then you're at 80 hertz. So, fast way to set crossovers up. This is the AMM one. This is a, what we call the audio multimeter, but it's, it's kind of street name is like the, the clamp dyno or the amp dyno, but um, that's basically what it's for is measuring amplifier power. So it measures the voltage here. You put your speaker wire through here so it can get a current reading and it can measure uh, voltage, current, phase angle, and calculate real watts, apparent watts, all that stuff. Um, so it's good for uh, measuring an amplifier's output. And then this beauty here is our IMSG. This one has a little plus drawn in. You can see there's a cut here because this is a prototype. We've enhanced our original IMSG by giving this some, uh, some more features where it'll auto basically semi-automatically find the resonant frequency of a, of a speaker or a tweeter or a woofer or whatever. You can uh, just hook this up to your aux in and you can find rattles in the car super easy because uh, this will make any frequency sine wave from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 
So you can sweep an entire system. You can find every single rattle. You can uh, you can just plug in here and like if you got a bunch of wires and you don't know what's what, you can just hit the different speakers. Find you know signal generator, amplifier built in. It it has a million uses really. But it's good for measuring uh, ported boxes. See where your your tuning frequency is. For people that are just amazed by what this can do and they didn't know if it's available, how can they find this? You can find this stuff on our website, demoreengineering.com. We sell most of it through our exclusive distributor, that's just Steve Mead Designs. So uh, he has a store called West Coast Car Audio, and uh, he's our, our partner and our exclusive distributor of these tools. Um, and he does take on dealers as well and, and, and other accounts like that. So uh, that would be the best place to find him. He also has an Amazon store as well. So uh, when these gentlemen are done, you can show us what's in the car. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. All right. Stay tuned. All right, we're inside the... What is this? It's a 2019 uh, Volkswagen GTI Rabbit Edition. This fast one. Yeah, the Rabbit. Diesel, non-diesel. It's a turbo gas. Turbo gas. Yep. All we right. So the talk of the room of the town. I've been here days. Is have you checked out the blue, the blue Volkswagen? No, I haven't. So this is it. So what, why, why is everybody so? astonished in here what have you done differently so we've got those small amplifiers that we saw earlier the the t302 we've got six of them in here and the thing is they're class a b and i think it's been probably quite a long time since people have sat in a class a b car and maybe we've forgotten how good they actually sound so we've got six class a b amplifiers running the whole system three of them are bridge running three uh 12 inch peerless subwoofers one of them is bridge running two seven inch mid bass in this door, one's running the two seven inch uh, ScanSpeak mid bass in the other door. And the last six amplifiers running stereo to these Brax ML1, ML2s, which are passively crossed over to each other. Um, I've got a basic uh, Chinese sample DSP in here that's nobody's brand. It's just a sample piece that's doing time alignment, but uh, not much else. I've got this beautiful Sony high res head unit here. Um, this is the, uh, so the model number is uh, hard for me to remember it's pretty new to me but i think it's called the gs9 or that's at least part of the number it's a nice piece we're playing flak files off of this usb drive here high-res flak files um and uh we've got a bunch of music on there that's that's ready to go all right about 15 tracks here we go We've been asking people, the only rule is when they get a demo, is you gotta play track 13 all the way up. So let's just get that out of the way. 
it in a nutshell and 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 I know the question might might be um more work to answer than not when you begin with for example sports it comes down to fundamentals strong fundamental game makes you a, a, a better basketball player what are the fundamental where do you not want to cheapen out when it comes to a sound quality stereo system the oohs and the ahs and the beauty I see are speakers yeah and sometimes and, and what I've seen is they blow mo much of their budget load on speakers and well nobody's gonna see my amps so kind of ignore the amp situation I'm wondering I'm seeing a, a reverse approach here am I am I am, is it safe to say you have a, a different approach happening here well we, we definitely do have good speakers in the car okay but I think that a really good amplifier can even make speakers that aren't so great sound pretty sound pretty good okay um, but I do I, I would have to say though that I think the sound difference between a bad amp and a good amp or a bad speaker and a good speaker there's probably more tolerance or more range in the speakers a little more range in the yeah speakers. forgiving in the speakers yeah I think the speakers are, are uh, probably the most important but definitely the second important is the amplifier if you you feed your nice speakers a distorted signal they're gonna accurately reproduce your distorted signal ah, ah, I got it got yeah it, got it got it um, for those that don't know, I, I haven't seen, I've heard of this, but I've never seen anybody play off of that. How, how do people get involved with what you're doing here and how you're playing a higher quality music? I'm kind of new to the high res stuff. Okay. I know that, uh, I search for a lot of high res, uh, tracks for this, um, show okay. and I found HD tracks was a good site to buy them on. And, uh, there's maybe three others that, that have a good selection of really high res music. These are, uh, high res flack files that are being streamed off of this USB directly. And um, yeah, that's where I've, that's where I started. Anyways, Pro there's probably your some of your viewers probably know a lot more than I do about that. <laughs> Last thing is, can you show us the application amplification installation in the back? Yeah, let's check it out. All right, let's do that. Here we go. Tony, this rear end is amazing. What do we got happening? I mean, this is just unbelievable. So we've got six of the 302 amplifier that we looked at earlier. This is the 300 watt Class AB two channel amp. These six channels here are bridge running these three uh, peerless subwoofers. This one is bridge running the left door's mid bass. This is bridge to the right door mid bass. And this one's running stereo to the tweeter pods. So we've got a, a collection here of about 1800 watts of class AB hi-fi amplification. The modular, the, the modular system molarity that I like here, is that going to be something you guys embrace as time goes on? Yes, I believe so. This we've come up with a really innovative heatsink design that we've been able to maximize. So we're going to be using like multiples of this configuration in in multi-channel amps like a 604, a 1208, uh, a 1205. We've got a total of eight models coming out. So they'll range from uh, 150 watts a channel like this all the way up to a thousand watts per channel on the, the biggest monoblock. Well, there you have it, folks. And to find out more. Be sure to look at their website. Yep, tomoreengineering.com. We're going to have the information up there on this. Right now, it's not even up there. That's how fresh this is. We just got it done for the show, and here it is. But uh, look, look, look for it in the uh, next couple of weeks.